Chiefs. The Canes won a six-point decision in Coral Gables. Now the Seminoles look to even the score as we move toward February in the ACC. Tip is coming next. As we close in on the midway point of this Atlantic Coast Conference basketball season, we welcome you to the Donald L. Tucker Center in Tallahassee today for the second meeting of the regular season and the 81st all-time between Miami and Florida State. With Jason Capel, West Durham, great to have you with us. You know, there are established rookies in this league, but there's an emerging rookie for the Canes, and that's Reading, Pennsylvania's Lonnie Walker, Jason. Lonnie Walker getting the job done for the Miami Hurricanes, averaging 18 points per game over the last four, and exploded for 25 points his last time out. Four made shots from three-point range, including the winning layup to send the game into overtime. This is as explosive a player as there is in the ACC. And on the other side of the lane, Waiting to combat that, Terrence Mann, the junior, 30 big points, more like Superman in his last contest. Scored it in a variety of ways, but mostly in the attacking the paint variety. Great footwork, can knock shots down from 12 feet in, and if he gets to the lane, he will finish with authority. So we'll keep an eye on Walker and Mann along with the rest of the Seminoles and Hurricanes. Remember, Miami won by six the first time three weeks ago. They shot 51% from the floor in the victory. We'll come back, get started. Big ball game on a very big Saturday in the ACC. Great to have you with us on the ACC Network. We're always looking for ways to create a better view. CC Basketball is being brought to you by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By New York Life, with the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. A beautiful day here in Tallahassee as we welcome you back inside the Tucker Center for the Knowles and the Canes and a quick look at our food line starting lineups Jason no real change for either school based on their most recent ball game absolutely and you have to look at the matchup up front Daniel Huell has come on really becoming a dominant player on the interior and the first time these teams met was the first game back for Chris Kamaji having missed eight games with a foot injury now he's back in game shape playing some of his best basketball of his career the Canes take the floor with Jim Laranega, 68-year-old native of the Bronx in New York, now in his seventh year with 154 career wins with the Canes, but maybe more importantly, 28 road wins in his ACC ledger, and Leonard Hamilton approaching 300 wins with Florida State, and he's got 497 in his career. So getting ready to hit some milestones is Leonard Hamilton. And Miami wears black for just the third time this year, they wore it in a win at Minnesota and also in a win at Hawaii over the holidays. And the Canes win the tap, and here's Jaquan Newton with Bruce Brown, Anthony Lawrence, Dewan Hewell, and of course the freshman we talked about at the top, Lonnie Walker. Newton over the top, Kamaji altered it, Hewell recovers. 12 to shoot, here's Walker. High arcing runner, good for Lonnie Walker. Such an explosive player. And when guards attack the lane against Florida State, you better have a floater in your package because Kamaji standing at 7-4 is going to get those shots up out of there. Turned over by Walker. Here's Brown on the attack. Leaves it for Lawrence. Now here's Lonnie Walker. Thought about it. Here's Newton. Miami comes in the ball game. Fifth best field goal shooting team in the ACC. Brown's three. And man, the rebound. Angola has had a remarkable conference side of his scoring ledger. Fakes the three. Skip out for man. And turned over off the deflection. Lawrence got a hand in there, and Walker comes away with it. Well, a tough pass for man. He's trying to find CJ Walker on the baseline. And at his size, not sure what he could do with it that close in. 
Baseline Newton. Still a 2 nothing Miami lead on the runner by Lonnie Walker. A minute and a half in. And that's a travel on DeWan Hewell. So Miami gives it back. And Jason, both these teams playing, of course, three weeks ago, know each other pretty well and I think are kind of feeling it out here in the first couple of possessions. Absolutely. But that's the Chris Kamaji effect right there. You can drive and believe you have him beat, but he can cover so much ground with his length and his ability to alter shots. Even when he's not there to block it, you have to be aware of where he is at all times. Angola for man. Here is C.J. Walker. Lob Kamaji! And Wes, you just simply throw that basketball where only one person can go get it. The 7-4 center goes up high and throws it down. To all the ball game, two minutes in. He's got things you can't coach, Mr. Cable. Absolutely. Can't coach height. Brown, Lawrence, passed on a quick three. Drives to the basket. Kofer. Knowles trying to jump into transition. Angola from deep. Seventh best three-point shooter in the league is the native of Colombia from Villanueva Casanare, Brian Angola. And he's shooting a hot basketball in ACC play, averaging 19 points per game in conference. And he's the guy that can stretch out the defense and make those driving lines for the Seminoles. Lawrence and the equalizer bounces out. Full house looking on in Tallahassee this afternoon. Kofer. Pull up at the foul line. How much better has Phil Kofer got? Yep. This season he's healthy. He's exploding to the basket and added that jumper. A soft touch by the big man. Averaging 11 and 6 against the conference. And Florida State has scored seven straight since the Lonnie Walker runner. Open the break today. Newton. Brown cuts it loose. Long rebound for Kamaji. You can see the Seminoles are willing to leave Brown on the perimeter. The gamble trying to get the ball out of Newton's hands. Bruce Brown's going to have to step up and make shots. Great job by Terrence Mann. He does all the little things that helps you get to the winner circle. One of the concerns Jim Laranega and his staff had, offensive rebounding today. And you give up 21 offensive rebounds the last time you face a ball club. That's calls for concern. And those offensive rebounds on many occasions lead to three-point shots. C.J. Walker, three-ball corner pocket. Eight-point lead. Florida State on a 10-0 run. Four minutes gone in this first half, and Miami's been staggered here by the Knowles, at least early. Newton. Through traffic, bumped and foul. That'll get us to a break. Foul will be on Kamaji. It'll be his first. First foul of the ball game. A moment ago, CJ Walker tallies. Back after this. Draft pick for car insurance. This is Florida State basketball. Talk about the great size, and if you're gonna going to attack the paint, you better come with some authority. The great block leads to transition play. And the pass is faster than the dribble. Walker gives it up to man. Live ball turnovers and tough shots lead to easy opportunities for the Seminoles to get out and put a show on in the fast break. Kamaji has the dunk off the lob, but Florida State's also a team averaging under nine threes a game, 8.9, Jason. They've already got two here today. They have a guy that is shooting some of his best basketball of his career, Brian Echo. Couple that with playing at home. Coming out and doing a nice job so far defensively. That breeds defense and energy into your squad. Brown has come out of the ball game for Coach Larinaga. DJ Vasilia that's right here with him. Attacking the runner, left hand rolls in. Ike Obiagu was there defensively, but Dejan Vasilievich has his first points. And it snaps that 10-0 run by the host Knowles. Goal back inside. Obiagu lost the handle on it and turned it over to Walker. Lonnie Walker, the fourth on the blaze. Newton a catch and shoot three. Jaquan Newton, five in a row for the Canes. That's just his third three of the year. That's a good sign for the Miami Hurricanes. Jaquan Newton has struggled mightily of late. Two of ten his last game. 
the senior coming out, seeing his first shot go through the net. Has to give him confidence. Five minutes gone, Kofor working baseline. Skipping the corner, Angola three. Wow. Brian Angola off the nice feed from Phil Kofor. Wes, he doesn't need a lot of time, and he needs absolutely no space whatsoever. Apparently, a natural lean in his jump shot where he's fading away makes it so tough, even with the contest, for you to bother his jump shot. Lead is back to six. Hewitt will catch well off against Obiagu. Inside with the right hand, tough shot and a score for Dewan oh. Yule. Dewan Yule is having a great season. Four double doubles, plus eight points per game. A guy that we've seen his confidence grow as this season progresses, and he's the inside force that has to have great production in the bench. Angola had it blocked. Jerry Heater, who works with Bill Covington Jr. and Tim Clockerty, tags Lonnie Walker with his first and number one on the cane. So. One free throw is coming up here for Brian Angola. How about a check of Jason Capel's forward keys to the game, brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers. Well, for the Miami Hurricanes, you must crash the boards as a team. The last contest against Florida State gave up 21 offensive rebounds, got beat plus 12. You must team rebound. And for Florida State, offensive execution. Execute the game plan. Try to get the ball inside, then spray it out for three-point shots. In the first six and a half minutes, we've seen the Seminoles do an excellent job of just that. Ninth best free throw shooter in the league, Brian Angola. As you see, Trent Forrest, number three, MJ Walker, number 23. Check into the ball game for Florida State for the first time, along with Fiondu Cabangeli, the big 6'10 redshirt freshman at 20 years of age from Burlington, Ontario, in Canada. Eight for Angola of Florida State's 15. Remember, he had 24 in the double overtime win against Syracuse. Off to a great start is Brian Angola here today. Chris Likes from Maryland, the 5'7 freshman out there handling the ball for Miami, number two. And here's Abuka Azundu. Sam Wardenberg's from New Zealand. We got the worldwide game going on today. <laughs> Six to shoot. Walker, a deep three. Back rim miss. Trent Forrest, the rebound. The Seminole defense is doing the job on multiple occasions now, forcing the Canes into a short shot clock. And they're doing a nice job boxing out, finishing possessions with rebounds. Calvin Gelly setting the nice screen. Forrest on the bounce to Kofi. Wardenberg, and it'll be a block on Sam Wardenberg and Jim Laranega. Can't believe it. Coach Laranega with the fancy footwork on the sideline. Upset with this play right here. Wardenberg stood his ground from that angle. Couldn't see if Colfer let that chicken wing go to knock him over. I think Coach Larry Nega has a good argument there. His player stood his ground, his legal guarding position, and he was dislodged by the offensive player. Wardenberg, the redshirt freshman from New Zealand, his first. And there's a foul on the block. And that was on Forrest, I believe. His first, two on Florida State. The West things have a way of working themselves out. A lot of times when coaches believe they got the short end of the stick on the call, the call's going to come back your way at some point. That's just the way the basketball gods yep. are going to make things happen. Wardenberg, whose playing time has picked up here recently, he had 13 minutes and seven rebounds in the ball game that went to overtime Wednesday night against Louisville. Seven minutes gone, first half, six-point lead for Florida State. Vasilievich again. Slapped away by Kofer. Now MJ Walker. On the drive. Scoop. Cabangeli with a rebound and a foul, I believe, Azundu. And it is on Abuka Azundu. 6'10 junior from Nigeria. His first and the third on the Canes. And Terrence Mann back for Phil Kofer. Once again. Rebounding the basketball is coming into play for the Miami Hurricanes. You force MJ Walker into a tough shot, hotly contested. Five guys in black jerseys have to find a Florida State player, drive them out, and rebound as a team. Man, now to Forrest. Oh, what a move on Likes. Tap follow, Kevin Gelly. And as soon as he finally the rebound. Can't be weak and timid inside today, Jason. This is a grown man game. 
rivalry game, a big game in the ACC. Two teams jockeying for position. We've seen in lead play today. Crazy things have happened. Yep. Virginia with a big win on the road to Duke. NC State getting the job done on the road as well against North Carolina. Likes the offensive foul, his first, four now on Miami. And Chris Likes call for the shove with the right hand. And so Miami hands it right back to Florida State, eight minutes in. Man, and Gola, quickly they get it right side to first. Now here's MJ Walker. Exploded here at Virginia Tech earlier last week with 24 points. Hanging jumper above the foul line. Good. Freshman from Jonesboro, Georgia, averaging almost nine against the league. Well, that's a tough matchup for DJ Vasilovic. When MJ Walker comes in the game, he has one mindset attack on the offensive end. This guy is wired to score. As you said, partner, doing an excellent job in league play. Yep. Really picking it up here the last couple of weeks. The freshman from Jonesboro, Georgia, where the former Seminole Tony Douglas hailed from. Vasilievich, a step back three. And a long rebound for Walker. Goals by eight, and goal of the crossover, the contact. Basket won't count. He's just showing off now. So Vasilievich. And MJ Walker on the board, and the Knowles, an eight point advantage. Almost nine minutes gone, first half. Lead for Florida State, our Coyote Tractor Co Players of the Week in the ACC. O'Meara, you're at seven. We had another fantastic ball game today in the Pax win in Chapel Hill. And of course, Gary Trent Jr., who had 30 a week ago Monday night in Miami, Jason. Yurt Seven is playing his best basketball of his career. A dominant force inside who can also step outside and knock down three point shots as well. Gary Trent Jr., he has a big load on his shoulders. He and Grayson Allen are the guys that have to make shots from the perimeter for the Blue Devils. Didn't happen today. Didn't happen today. That yep. results in a, a loss at home against the Virginia team that's now in the driver's seat holding a three-game lead in the ACC over everyone. Well, I'm going to ask you a note here on that as well. Because fans will look at the stat sheet today and wonder how. Man stripped of it. Nice play, Wardenberg. But Florida State recovers, and look at Angola. Right back down the lane, draws the foul. Great initiative by Brian Angola. And the foul, I believe, on Wardenberg. Well, well the scouting report on Angola is he's a shooter. But once again, a 50-50 ball, and you're a road team, you have to come up with. But with Angola knocking shots down from the perimeter, you have to close out hot. That allows him to drive to the basket where now he's putting a lot of pressure on the defense. Free throw good. Don't forget our coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the nearly one million men and women of the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe and in over 175 countries and on the high seas. So proud to have you with us. Thanks for protecting our freedom. And hope you're enjoying the broadcast. I think this will be a good one today. And right now it's a 10-point lead, and Brian Angola has got 10. And he'll get a seat on Leonard Hamilton's bench. So MJ Walker, Trent Forrest, Phil Kofer, Terrence Mann, and Chris Kamaji on the floor against Dewan Hewell, DJ Vasilievich, Chris Likes, Bruce Brown, and Anthony Lawrence. And he's got to solve the Knowles momentum here early, Jason, if nothing else. We're almost midway this first half. In the first matchup. A big part of that resurgence for the Hurricanes was the guy that just passed the basketball. Chris Likes off the bench, 18 points. He was the energizer in that contest. But once again, scouting report has changed. They focused on him. Nice job once again by the Seminoles, forcing tough shots. Everything is contested on the perimeter and even when you get to the hole as well. Kamaji going to set a screen here for Man. This is Kofer, and that's deep. Missed everything. Lawrence the rebound. Here is Likes, all five, seven of them. Vasilievich, a flyby on MJ Walker in a three ball. DJ Vasilievich has five on his 32nd three, or 36th three of the year, I should say. It's because of Chris Likes pushing that ball into end, drew the defense, had his head up, make the correct pass. Vasilievich is an excellent outside shooter. Seven point lead now. Ball got knocked away by Huell on a ball intended for Kamaji. What a pass, Likes, and Lawrence finishes. 
Anthony Lawrence's first points. You can control the game without scoring if you're a good player. Chris likes. He can score the basketball, but just his demeanor, his defensive pressure, and his ability to find people and make others around him better is what he can bring to the game also. So within five are the Canes on five straight. Kofa, 10 to shoot for Florida State. Here is Kamaji, right-hand turn and a score on the Not going to get much further than that, is he? What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> He's too big, Wes. He catches it. The only thing you can do is build the wall. If you front him, they throw over the top. Soft touch by the big man inside. Brown answers. And three consecutive assists by number two in black. Attacking so low to the ground, he puts the defense in rotation, and the freshman is making the simple, correct plays every offensive possession. Man. Skips it for Kofa. Spins on Lawrence. And now here's Walker. Oh, a little cross-up on Vasiljevic. And the score for MJ Walker. It's a bad matchup for the Hurricanes. Right. Vasiljevic cannot guard MJ Walker off the bounce. Too explosive. And make no mistake, Walker knows that. <laughs> He's looking to attack at all times. Likes deep three. Just ahead of eight minutes and a six-point nose lead. And man, draws the foul. I think it might have been his buddy from Boston, Bruce Brown. And it was. Guys that have known one another a long, long time. And here's another look at MJ Walker. MJ Walker with the nice filet crossover getting to the hole. And Chris Likes on the break, pushes it ahead. And Amp Lawrence going to the hole. Nice little double pump for a big time finish. Here comes Angola and CJ Walker. Jaquan Newton and Lonnie Walker back for Miami. And as you see, Vasilievich go to the bench and Trent Forrest for Florida State. Terrence Mann's first points of the afternoon. And line violation on Mann. And that will. Oh, no, we got a foul. It's on Kamaji. That's his second. And number three on the null. So, very quickly, Fiondu Kamangeli off the bench for Coach Hamilton. And those are the fouls you can't have if you're Chris Kamaji. You've already staked your claim as being a force in this contest. The Seminoles need you on the floor. You can't have those costly fouls there that's going to possibly put you on the bench for the rest of the half. Number eight, Brown. Ten to shoot. Fuel at length. Going to challenge Kamaji up strong. And there's number three. Kind of a smart play when you're thinking about it from Dewan Hill's standpoint, right? Absolutely. You Attack know Kamaji has man. two. Understand yep. he has two. You challenge his feet to see if he can stay in front of you. Leonard Hamilton does not like the call but just simply could not get him out quick enough. Juan Kuhl to the basket, calls the foul, goes by seven. Twenty-four seventeen, Florida State, the lead on Miami. Back with Jason Capel, West Durham. Jay Hoover, our producer, Billy McCoy, our director. Juan Kuhl going to the line after drawing Chris Kamaji's third. And Jason, it's a, it's a whole different deal for Kuhl this year. Doing an excellent job commanding the paint, more confident when he catches the basketball. In the last possession, understanding the big man across from him, Chris Kamaji, with two fouls, immediately attacks him off the bounce, forcing the big man to move his feet, picks up that third foul. Now he will be on the bench for the remaining 746. A smart play, but Huell, a much more confident player. You see 20 points and eight rebounds the last time the Canes faced the Seminoles. Off to a nice start here as well. He's got four today. He's had 18 or more in three of their last five. Miami has won two straight and three of the last five. In fact, five-point lead now for the Knowles. Kofor calling for the ball against Lawrence. Kevin Gelly in there, and it was thrown beyond his reach by Walker. Turned over to Miami. C.J. Walker has to dribble that ball to the baseline to get a better angle. Lonnie Walker short with the three. C.J. Walker tried to keep it alive. Newton recovers. Here is Lonnie Walker on the drive and fell off the iron and a blocking call on Kofer. First on Phil Kofer, five on Florida State. I think Kofer saw the look 
in Walker's eyes as he's attacking the basket and understood that was about to be a highlight waiting to happen. Walker unable to finish, but takes the contact, steps to the line for a pair. Coming up on the Hardys halftime report. We'll have scores from around the ACC, a look at the conference standings, all the highlights and stats for you as well. Hardy's halftime report in seven minutes and 13 seconds of play. Walker has got three. Jason, why do we have – we have expectations of some freshmen. They're, they're created as prep guys, high school players, whatever the case may be. Lonnie Walker came in, the most decorated recruit in Miami basketball history, and now we're starting to see what all the conversation is about. Why didn't we see it at the start? Well, the young man had a meniscus tear in the summer. That slowed him down, twisted his ankle in the season against FAMU. And now he's becoming more confident, understanding what he's supposed to do on the floor. And he's just a freshman. Some guys take longer to develop, but you look at his body, his ability to shoot the basketball, a natural athlete, and so many excellent freshmen in the ACC. The Seminoles have one as well. As well. Number 23, MJ Walker. A guy that can shoot the basketball, a great athlete himself. He's off to a hot start here in this first half. He's got seven and Newton travel. It'll be a turnover on Miami. It'll be just their third. Florida State has six in this first half. With 6.40 to play. Here's Angola. Slipped a little bit. Tried to dump it to Kevin Gelly. And last touched by Miami. Angola to put it in toward the deep corner. Lob for, whoa, what a catch of the ball by a man with Lawrence there. Terrence Mann on the drive, shoved it up there and in. Three for Terrence Mann. That's a tough shot. I think new football coach Willie Taggart would like that <laughs> catch, drive, and finish. Like a tight end coming across the middle, Terrence Mann. How do you want to? He won't cause problems with Willie Taggart and Leonard <laughs> Hamilton. I think they'll get along just fine. <laughs> that ball got kicked, but last touched. And Bill Covington Jr. getting some help from Tim Clockerty on that. And here's another look. When you're playing Florida State, you have to understand scouting report. Terrence Mann is a driver. He wants to go right. You must beat him to the spot. You can't let him get his footprints in the paint. Too athletic, too strong, too crafty of a finisher inside. Nine-point lead after the basket by man on the runner. And here is Jaquan Newton working against C.J. Walker. Kevin Gelly almost got enough of that to cause a Miami turnover. Nine to shoot. Bruce Brown quickly. Lonnie Walker from the corner. Got it. Three ball, Lonnie Walker, he's got six. You can just see this young man, as he's become healthy, the confidence. He's built like an upperclassman. He can shoot the basketball and a great athlete to boot. But we talked about in the open the matchup that we were anxious to see, the freshman against the junior. And Terrence Mann, when he starts making shots from the perimeter, he's so tough to defend. Kevin Kelly, I think, reached across Huell to kick, commit the foul. And now, Coach Hamilton asking the officials to go look at it. Juan Huell, he did shove Terrence Mann. Not sure what led to it. The officials will go to the monitor. So Kevin Kelly is going to get his first. Six on Florida State, but there may be a little something else added to the bill here. Jerry Heater, Bill Covington Jr. And nothing to it, says this crew. See Jaquan Newton getting in trouble as he's trying to lob the basketball. There's the foul. There's the foul there. You see the little touch up. And then what we didn't see outside of the screen as it was coming back. A little shove from Buell, letting them know I'm here. Eight but, point lead. But we play on, and cooler heads must prevail 
in this hotly contested ball game. Anything surprised you about the first almost 15 minutes? Not really so far. You know Florida State how well they play at home. Only lost one ball game. That was to Louisville, a game they controlled throughout. These two teams are 19 of 35 combined. Make it 20 of 37 as Lawrence knocks down his second field goal and draws the foul. I think that's on Fiondu Cabangeli. Or MJ Walker, sorry, his first. And you can see the mandate for Miami. Shot fake, turn down maybe what would be good three-point shots and attack the paint, believing they can score around the basket, especially now with Kamaji on the bench with three fouls. Five for Lawrence. Five-point lead for Florida State. Man out front. Miami on the switch, or Hewell had Terrence Mann momentarily. Here's MJ Walker out of the double team to Kevin Gelly. Turns over the top of Hewell and Biondu Kevin Gelly on the board. Wes, I saw this young man shooting around before the game, knocking down outside shot after outside shot. The young man is only going to get better. Big, physical, but also has a soft touch as well. Anthony Lawrence shoots and hits. Nice oh, half man. for Anthony Lawrence. He now has eight. That's his first triple of the day. For Miami, now has six threes or five threes in the first half. Good heavens. The Kings are doing a nice job creating for one another. Abigelli slips it to MJ Walker. He'll try to answer and does. His second three. Talking about Kevin Gelly. This young man is a talented player. Not many big guys can give you a shot fake, top of the key, drive, suck the defense in, and have the presence to facilitate to an open shooter. Seven point lead for Florida State. And Jay Walker now with 10 in the first half. He fouled out in just 16 minutes on Wednesday night against Georgia Tech. Seven to shoot, under four to play. Hewell thought about it. Now drives, little sky hook. Tapped out of there, new shot clock. Lonnie Walker doesn't need one. Lonnie Walker now with nine in the first half. West, the mechanics on his jump shot are so pure, Lonnie Walker. His elbows tucked in, balls right over his right eye, and a great follow through. This is a talented young freshman that's now coming into his own. Some kind of ball game now here as we go down the stretch of this first half. C.J. Walker on the drive, rebounded by Hewell. Florida State is 68% from the floor. Miami is 48% in this first round. Blocked by Cabangeli. So Fiondu Cabangeli, the foul. Free throws when we come back. But M.J. Walker, pick a Walker, any of them, doing damage in the opening frame at the Tucker Center. AC three-point challenge presented by Mellow Mushroom. It's a free download in your app store. You can play as your favorite ACC team. And old 2-5 was greasing the elbow this afternoon. Getting ready for the ACC Network three-point challenge in Brooklyn. The shooter's touch there. Got the money ball there at the end, right? Got a couple to go down. Yeah. Well, highly intense ball game here in the opening, what, almost 17 minutes, Jason. Well, you see the percentages. Both teams shooting a hot basketball, especially from distance. Florida State, 68% from the floor. And the problem for the Seminoles, maybe the only problem so far, six turnovers. That's allowed the Miami Hurricanes now extra possessions on the offensive end where they've knocked down six triples themselves and slowly beginning to attack the paint and getting the front line of Florida State in foul trouble. Miami not a great free throw shooting team, 64.6 over the regular season. A little better in conference play, just under 70%, but Jaquan Newton missed them both, and then Ibuka Azundu committed his second on a careless reach over. Miami second on Azundu, eight on Miami. Jim Laranega, who has Dewan Hewell on his bench over there. Let Azundu, the junior from Lagos, in Nigeria, by way of Charlotte, stay on the floor. Is Phil Kofer at 68%, goes to the other end for one and one. That's a 
forget, we've got an ACC Network contest for you tonight in prime time. And that is Wake Forest at Louisville. Check your local listings for your ACC Network station. Brian Crawford will have to get it in overdrive for Danny Manning's team against well, what a marvelous job David Padgett's done. Oh, Coach Jason. Padgett has done an excellent job re-energizing that team, making adjustments. You have a senior point guard, a front line that has experience, yeah. but his coaching, keeping that team together and allowing them to play through mistakes and continue to improve, he's done an excellent job, especially in ACC play. Louisville is 5-2. and two. They're the closest to Virginia. Heading into tonight's contest at the KFC Yum Center. Forrest, here's Walker. Under three to go now in this first half. Sell out at the Tucker Center looking on. And a hard move to the basket. And the second field goal for Phil Kofer. Five for Kofer. Kofer is so decisive now when he catches that ball on the interior. Facing up, sweep to the baseline, and a power move to the rim. Lonnie Walker at nine in this first half. Likes the city of it's thought about it. Skip on the corner, Lawrence Guns and hits. Anthony Lawrence, the second, his second three. He has 11 in the first half. But West, Chris Likes is making all the right plays. As a freshman, he's taking care of the basketball, drawing the defense, putting them in rotation, and then has the awareness to find open teammates and create opportunities. Inside of two minutes to go. Kofor on the baseline, jumper rolled off, Lawrence the rebound. Miami trails four, here is Chris Likes. Nice pass to Azundu, and he'll score with the left hand. First bucket for Abuka Azundu. And it's a two-point game with right out about a minute and a half. And there's C.J. Walker on the drive for his second field goal. That's a nice job by C.J. Walker. A little big boy action on the drive. Drop that inside shoulder and power that ball to the rim. One way to slow down an explosive and quick offensive player is make him defend and attack him on the other end. Nice job by number two in goal. Walker, scoop with the right hand and in. Boy, Lonnie Walker, 11 now in the first half on his fourth field goal. Wes, we've seen him make three-point shots. That right there is a money move. That's a guy showing I'm athletic, I'm going to drive to my strong side, and I'm going to elevate to a level that not many people can get to. An explosive player, and he's showing his full package throughout this first half. Double figures now for the fifth straight game, Jason. Well, he's made multiple three-point shots. So now you have to press up a little bit more. And now he's going to go in his bag and show his full package by attacking you and if you let him get right, too athletic, not many people can go to the height he can go to to contest that shot. Well, whether it's Lonnie Walker or MJ Walker, and for Florida State, their Walker has been pretty good too. One of their two. Well, another excellent freshman. Guys that can make shots and make individual plays on the offensive end are going to have a good showing, especially in ACC play. And these guys are not hunting their shots. They're playing within the offense, taking what comes to them, but they're shot ready and always ready on the offensive end to attack, having great first halves when you look at these freshmen, Walker and Walker on both sides. Here is C.J. Walker. Trent Forrest back on the floor for Florida State. Kofor, high arcing three. Got it. Bill Cooper now, eight in the first half. Lead is five as we approach a half minute. Miami can get two for one. Nope, not anymore. His likes will spot up. Terrence Mann the rebound. And now the final shot for the Knowles, who lead by five. Likes will make it tough on you. Now Forrest with Vasilievich defending. Ten to go. Man, six, five. Step back three out front. Front rim miss. Lonnie Walker the rebound. Horn sounds, and we are at the break in Tallahassee. Florida State 44. 
Miami 39. Very entertaining opening. 20 minutes of play. Hardy's halftime report from Tallahassee is next. Welcome back in. College Basketball Live sitting here with a few ACC coaches. There's one first-time head coach in this group, David Padgett. When, when some assistants, most assistants, get a head coaching job, it happens in April. You got yours in October. How would you assess the challenges of getting your team ready for the season in the preseason? I don't know if we have enough time to talk about the challenges we face, but uh, you know, the good news about the team I inherited, uh, we have a, a very good mix of older players who've played college basketball, seniors, juniors, even a sophomore in VJ King, and we have a very talented freshman class. Obviously they're freshmen, there's a lot they need to learn and go through, and there's no easy way to get freshman experience except to let them go through it. But our older guys have been tremendous in trying to help the younger guys and get ready for the season. So. Just each practice, we're just trying to get better than we were the day before. You had a little more lead time when you stepped over from an assistant to replacing John Calipari there at, at Memphis. What advice would you, would you give him stepping in, although the time frame is a little bit different? No, well, David's going to do a great job, and he's a basketball guy, and his dad was a really good coach as well, too, and, and so he's going to do great. And, um, you know, they're, they're good. Their team's really good, and, you know, following – you know, with Coach Patino, and you know when I took over at Memphis, following Couch, uh, Coach Calipari, it's just they're hard to do because you know the success that you're following in those, in both guys. So you just do the best you can. It was a primary head coaching job there at Memphis. You're just getting started, Mike. Reflect on, on what what it was. You're at the pinnacle now, the coaching in the ACC. Reflect to your first head coaching job when you slid into that chair and had that ownership maybe an overwhelming feeling what was that like i think it was i remember my first year at the university of delaware in 1995 i i wasn't very trusting of delegating i tried to do everything and a little too much i've learned to delegate more but i think the biggest thing is you try to be yourself you know you've worked for a guy you've been with a head coach i think to develop your own identity and be yourself as soon as you can get confident doing that's going to be helpful jim what was yeah, that like? my, my first head coaching job was at a Division II school called American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, recruiting there was very, very difficult. But we spotted a young man I thought could really turn our program around. His name is Rick Carlisle. And we tried to recruit <laughs> Rick Carlisle to a Division II school. <laughs> Two years later, I was the assistant at Virginia, and uh, Rick called me. He was playing at the University of Maine, and he transferred to Virginia helped us get to the Final Four, now has been in the NBA since 1984. So when you're looking at players and trying to build a program, you got to find good players. Rick was a good player. We just couldn't get him to AIC. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. You might be someplace soon that you can actually get him. Buzz, your, your first head coach. Yeah, what was I, that like? I remember it vividly. Uh, very honored, grateful, uh, bigger than any dream I'd ever had. Was very thankful that the University of New Orleans would hire me and uh, have felt that away every day over the last 11 years. Brad? Yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, I took over at uh, UNC Wilmington, having been an assistant there for eight years under a very good coach and Jerry Wainwright. So the program was in, in a great situation. We had good players coming back, a good foundation. We'd been to the tournament. And so really the, the ease of transition for me was, was much easier than most in that I, I already knew the league, I knew the university, uh, and Coach Wainwright had given me a ton of responsibility. So that really gave me a lot of confidence. You mentioned getting to uh, the NCAA tournament, and when you're at maybe a, a lower level or a mid-major school, it's getting to the tournament's a great accomplishment. When you're in the ACC, it's not just getting to the tournament, it's making a run. You could have a great year, maybe even win a championship in the league, but you don't get to the second weekend, and uh, it's almost forgettable in some fans' eyes. How do you guys self-assess when it comes to success relative to the NCAA tournament, whether it's getting there or advancing deep? Well, for me, I mean, I, I've tried to be better uh, just about your own personal success and what you define it as. I think when I, my time at Memphis, uh, I was just, I was really unhealthy uh, mentally uh, and, and just because I, I lived and died by every single game. And I, I, so when I came to Georgia Tech, I tried to have a better perspective on things and, and it's a work in progress. Uh, it's hard to get to the tournament. I mean, I thought we had a good year last year, and we finished 11th place in this league. 
And I mean, so, and we had eight wins in the league. I don't know if we'll ever get eight wins again in this league. I mean, it's hard to do. And so, you know, if you, you just do the best you can, I've tried to be better about that and focusing on just doing the best you can and let the chips fall where they fall. Now, as, a, as a player, obviously, you want to get as deep as you can. What about as a coach? How do you, he said when he started out, he didn't have a healthy perspective. You're just starting out. What's your perspective? Well, I think at Louisville, it's, it's just been long established that getting to the tournament, per se, isn't enough. I think making a deep run is, has come to be expected over the last 15, 16 years, and obviously we've had a lot of success. Now, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself or on my team to say, hey, we have to get to the Elite Eight or we have to get to the Final Four, because that's just not realistic. You know, everything we've been going through, me as a first-time head coach, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. So we're just trying to have as good of a season as we can have, win as many games as we can have, kind of just break up into three segments. you got non-conference, you've got conference, and then postseason. So just take it one segment at a time. How does that change as you get deeper into your career? Because when we refer to you guys, how many Final Fours does he have? How many national championships? Well, that dynamic happened a little bit this year for us. We, the two previous years we've been to the Elite Eight, we get knocked out in the second round by a very good West Virginia team. But we got, we finished in the top four of the regular season and got to the championship game of the ACC tournament. And so I was trying to tell our guys that, you know, we had a pretty good run and, and even uh, it was even harder trying to explain that to my fans. But maybe they finally got it at the end of the day. <laughs> what about you, you made a deep run with George Mason. Now here you are at Miami. Yeah. 20 years ago, I had an incredible opportunity to talk to the great John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. And he talked about one thing that you had to have to be successful as a coach. And he said, you have to have balance. You have to have the understanding of what your expectations are, maybe very different than what anybody else is. And you just have to have that balance in your life, balance with your team so that you're enjoying the journey. Not so much talking about, did you make the final four? So, uh, and that's the way we've tried to approach it. We just want to be the best we can be every season we're competing. Uh, last thing, Buzz, it's validation though, right? I mean, NCAA tournament, that's a, that's a thing you can sink your teeth into. I think it just depends on what validation and who you're wanting the validation from, uh, not trying to be holier than now. I like playing in the NCAA tournament because that means I have an extended period of time with our players each day. And so whether we win, whether we get there, I think that's for other people to judge. I think my responsibility as a leader is to help them grow to be the best people they can be. And if that means we play a couple extra games, maybe that time period helps them even more. And Brad, you've had a taste of it there, Clemson. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a while. It's certainly something that we want to get back to. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, playing in March with a chance to advance. That's kind of a phrase we use to, to, to kind of keep our momentum going. And I think it's something that you put the NCAA tournament out there, it's not as easy at some programs. It's more, it's more of a challenge. And, uh, certainly you analyze each team and, and just try to get better working on that with that, that thought in mind for us. Okay. Good perspective, guys. We'll wrap it up when we return. These guys have left uh, quite a mark on their teams. What about the, the digital footprint, social media? Get into that for a few minutes, guys. And yeah. a lot of people want to ask, how, how much longer yeah. do you want to go? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, I'm going to yeah, ask that. Gonna I'm going to ask that. you, right. how much longer do you want to go? Yeah, I want to. Uh, I didn't get my knee replaced to retire. Let's put it that way. So I'm 70 years old. I think I'm definitely younger at heart. Uh, I have the knowledge, though, of a 70-year-old who's coached for 42 years and has coached 11 years with the U.S. team. And, I still I think that's a, a good combination, especially at a great school. I want to make a difference. I'm enthusiastic. Come on, Kyle, I got you. Grayson Allen, when describing you, called you a friend. Yeah. Which is interesting for a 21-year-old to call a 70-year-old a friend. Right. How do you think you've been able to connect with players these days and change and, and be able to adapt? Well, I think it's up to the teacher to adapt so that his or her teachings are accepted easier by their pupils. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current. Grayson Allen is a really good basketball player. He also appears to be a dirty basketball player. Well, his reputation for this precedes him. What gives you confidence that, that Grayson, if you have confidence, that Grayson has kind of gotten past 
the, the issues, the tripping issues. And he, and he yeah, well, you know, it, it, look, there's a, it, is it more tripping issues or what everyone made of, of a couple ish, uh, issues? I want Grayson to be Grayson. Grayson's, a, I think, as good a player as there is in the country. And uh, uh, I want him to be a leader, and I want him to not have a rearview mirror. How much did you worry about him last year, though, because of all the public outcry uh, and the attention that he got? How much were you worried that he'd yeah. be able to handle it all? You would have thought that there was a capital offense that had occurred. That's the attention, I think, that our program brings, the scrutiny. And, you know, you have to learn to live under that microscope. But he has had an opportunity to be in incredible situations where you don't play at the beginning of your freshman year. You are the hero of the national championship game. You're an All-American as a sophomore, and you have an incident, and then that's unbelievably publicized. And then you have another situation, and then you're hurt the whole year. Holy mackerel. He's lived a lifetime in those three years, and I, I think it'll all uh, end up you know, really, really good. How good can this team be? I mean, you have talent. You've got bigs. They're very different than a lot of your previous teams. Yeah, you know, our team is going to be very much a developing team. We have three guys in Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter, and Marquise Bolden who are going to be pro players, maybe all three of them at the end of this year. We don't have the perimeter depth that we, you know, like the last few years, but we have more big guys. And so we have to adjust what we do, uh, and which we do every year. Has your outlook of recruiting one of that changed? People think it has. No, no. I, you know, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy. That's, that, that's not the case. You know, it's just that Grand Hill was in the mid-90s or early 90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill. You know, Leitner and Batty A, and that's when it started for us with Elton Brand, but he was even here two years. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where it would be the best decision for them to go, and then I'm okay with that. Bill and Bill knew their network coverage on what has already been just a magnificent day of basketball in this conference. NC State an overtime road win at North Carolina, Virginia winning at Duke for the first time in 23 years. And now, here is Miami down five and the ball to start the second half. And Pittsburgh is playing Syracuse at this hour and two more games on the card tonight. And there's the runner by Newton. And we get a whistle and foul. And it's going to be on C.J. Walker. We talked about three-point shooting, Jason. This is pretty strong by the Knowles. You see three of the makes have come from the corners. And that's a product of driving the ball, making the defense have to rotate an unselfish basketball, moving it around, find open teammates. And the three-point shot from the corner is the closest distance behind the arc. Jaquan Newton shooting into the north end of the Tucker Center into an array of things. Faces, <laughs> a local brick company. One out of two, slapped out Vasilievich, long rebound, and look at here, Lawrence left open. Four-point trip for the Canes. Isn't that how it happens? Yeah. You give up the offensive rebound, it usually leads directly to a three-point shot. And Lawrence having himself a ball game here this afternoon. Yes, he is now with 14, and that's his third three. Topher tried to answer out front, couldn't. Here's Newton. Miami out of the locker room with four straight to draw to within one. Here goes Lonnie Walker, skip for Lawrence. Have another. Nope, front rim miss. And Newton on a tip back from Hewell. Shot fake Walker, look at those soft runners and air ball. Anthony Lawrence, a second try. Phil Topher finally, very workmanlike inside. C.J. Walker hit his own guy. Now Angola. Tries to back it down the gearbox a little bit. <laughs> Baseline Angola for the dunk. You can see the 
mindset of Florida State. Whoever Vesejevic is guarding, that is who they're trying to get the basketball to, and they're attacking him. Not believing that his foot speed can keep up with their drivers. And when they catch him in transition, no matter who he's matched up against, the ball seems to find that offensive play. Foul on Newton. Hey. Rebound for C.J. Walker. Angola, big fella to catch and dunk. West, he's 7-4. Not sure how you lose track of where he is on the floor. And the big man beats everyone down the basketball court. Unselfish play leads to an easy finish. And the Seminoles falling back into their 2-3 zone. Foul, and that is Walker, I believe. And if so, it's his second. Number two on Florida State in this half. And here comes Chris Likes for Jaquan Newton. So the first substitution in this second half is the 5'7 freshman, Mitchellville, Maryland, averaging 11 points in conference play, Jason. And he's doing an excellent job. And left the, open. Scores the basketball, getting others involved. And his stellar play, I think, is a, the leading contributor to the fact that Jaquan Newton has not played well. Kofer, baseline. Look out. Phil Kofer went for the full service, draws the foul. Anthony Lawrence, his first. Take me there, coach. Phil Kofer, the shot fake, goes baseline with bad intentions. The shot was actually blocked by the backboard. Oh, Phil's okay. But the big fella took the contact, earns himself a trip to the line. Once again, a young man this season, he's healthy, feels good about himself. You can tell he's been in the gym putting in the work, expanded his game well beyond the three-point line. That's what allows him those drives now to get into the hole. Leonard Hamilton with the requisite tie loosened up for the second half. The second one by Kofor pushes him into double figures. Seven-point game. Well, it's been entertaining now from the jump here today at the Tucker Center. We kind of expected it to be a pretty good ball game. Covered all 94 feet, that's for sure. Vasiljevic against this zone. It's moving quickly. Fuel. Double team there. Cooper almost picked it. And then almost ended up over here with us. Stays with the Canes. Jim Laranega with 28 road wins in the ACC since. Look at Vasiljevic. Oh, my goodness. That's one way to beat his own. That was down there, what, St. George Island? Somewhere down there around? I was going to say, that wasn't from Tallahassee. No, he shot that one from Orlando. And once again, C.J. Walker using his strength to get the freshman Chris Likes off of him. Six-point game. Three gone here in the second half. Lonnie Walker. And against this zone, you can see Coach Laranega choosing to go with Vesejevic as well as Likes. Nice. Brown as well as Newton on the bench. Guys that aren't great shooters. Against the zone, you need guys that can make shots. You get the ball to the center in that ACC area. That is a strong point. Lawrence reaches in, draws the foul on C.J. Walker. That'll be the second on Anthony Lawrence. It's the second on Miami. And here's the nice shot over the top of Kamaji. Well, to be the zone, you attack the gaps. And one of the main gaps, the sweet spot is what I like to call it, is right there at the ACC. You put someone there that has size, that can score, can also catch face and spray it out to open shooters. That's a way to attack the zone. And with Lawrence right there, a guy that can shoot over the top as well as facilitate, great offensive execution there by the Kings. Four-point game. Across the way at the Florida State bench. Skull session with Leonard Hamilton and assistant Charlton Young, who had to scout on Miami in full progress. C.J. Walker, the left-handed second free throw, rims out. Five-point game. Foul line, high post area. Here's Lawrence. Likes. Lonnie Walker on Brian Angola. Chris Likes thought about it. 
Jewel, long two, air ball. And goal of the rebound, outlet for man. Lonnie Walker to beat. Terrence stops at the left wing. He'll take Lonnie Walker on the dribble in traffic. Kamaji had it banged out on the stick back. Here's Lawrence for Likes. Got caught in the air, dumps it back for Lonnie Walker. Three ball for Lonnie Walker gives him 14. Three to the head for number four in black. This guy is shooting. He's playing great basketball in a great rhythm on the break. It's nice of your guard to get there, get stuck, and the ball happens to find its way in the hey. hey. shooter. And on the other end, CJ Walker attacking the freshman at every opportunity. Doing a nice job attacking the baseline. Sees no one in sight. The lucky lefty takes the contact. Big finish. Those by two. ACC are a click away. And one. Big time. Customize your experience for scores, stats, highlights, and news. The ACC mobile app presented by Outback. Four-point game, almost five minutes into half two at the Tucker Center. And Jason, let's go through these standings. You touched on it. Virginia's win gives them two games as we approach the midway point ahead of Louisville. Duke, Clemson, Miami, three back. Look at the, the thing that steps out is zero to five, 13 spots with half the conference season to go. So much parity in the league this season. Virginia has staken its claim as the cream of the crop. Louisville a surprise to some, but a veteran team that continues to grow. Clemson, Dante Grantham going down is a huge blow. Right. But the Blue Devils, a big loss at home. NC State making their charge. And that's what makes this game here so important to both of these ball clubs. You have to win on your home floor if you're Florida State. And Miami trying to sneak out of here with a victory as well. Because they sweep. Gives Miami the tiebreak. Absolutely. And you can count on some tiebreaks. Absolutely. The way this campaign going. Four point game. Walker missed the free throw. Here's Lonnie Walker. And deflected by man over the inline out of bounds. And CJ Walker is out in Trent Forest, reports back for Florida State. And there is Forrest, the sophomore from Chipley, Florida, who's the nephew of the former great Seminole running back, Amp Lee. Comes in averaging five and a half and five rebounds against the league. Likes tees up a triple. And it's Kofor the rebound in front of Bruce Brown. One would think it would start to calm down a little bit here, but it has not so far in the second half. 12 to shoot. Kofor. Oh, took Lawrence baseline and fouled. Either Lawrence, Brown, potentially Hewell. Bill Covington Jr. out from underneath with Anthony Lawrence's third foul. All West, in the half. Well, West, there defensively, if you're Ant Lawrence, you have Kofor in the corner. You must force him to that ball screen. That's a 5-4 ball screen. You force him to it. That's a trapping area. You can't allow him to turn it down. Now he ha has the inside track along the baseline to get to the rim. Brown comes over, help side, and takes the foul. But you must do a better job defensively changing your feet depending on where you are on the floor and making the offensive player use the ball screen. See Lawrence come out of the ball game. Sam Wardenberg, who played briefly in the first half. Redshirt freshman from Henderson, New Zealand. Back out for the Canes. A dozen now for Phil Kofer. Six-point game. For the backcourt pressure, Brown against Forrest. Lost it, turned over. Outlet here is Phil Cooper with Chris Likes to beat. And Likes stripped him of it. And draws the foul, third on Likes. I don't think there'll be anything added to this. Looking at it at real speed there. Well, it shouldn't be. You have a 6'9 guy on the break. And a 5-6 player just simply trying to do whatever he can. Yep. He went for the basketball, got a piece of the arm. You don't want to give up an easy two points, especially a play and a dunk that can energize this crowd. The offensive end for Miami, 
Bruce Brown has to step up and make plays. That's an unforced turnover. He has to wake up and play. He and Jaquan Newton are too important to this team. They're the guys that were the starters in the backcourt a season ago who played a vital role in this team having success. They must step up, especially on the road, and produce for the Kings to get a win. Gophers pushed it back to seven on three straight free throws. Went one out of two on the trip there. Six of eight today at the line is the senior from Fayetteville, Georgia. Walker, deep three from in front. Bounded away to MJ Walker. Wardenburg, Lob, Kanaji, and Yule did a good job, but then lost it. Back from man. Now coach. Blocked on the way up. Lonnie Walker out of there with it. Crowd wanted a foul on the Kofor dunk. Here's Likes. Coach Larry Nega yelling timeout, <laughs> trying to get a stoppage in action to bring his squad over and talk to him. The Seminole fans unhappy here. Terrence Mann to drive a nice dish. And I just think that's grown man business inside. You know, a pie is going to be contested. And that's what rivalry games are all about. Florida State Seminoles, seven point lead. It's bow time, so that means we're checking the Bojangles fan of the game. Nice job, young man. Start him young. That's what you always say, right, Jason? Throwing up, throwing up to you. Yeah, there we go. All right. I get a big bottle of water before you get to the game. <laughs> I'm flavored water. water. Flavored water. Those are kids. Got to have some flavor to it. Get some popcorn. <laughs> Great to have a full house looking on. 81st meeting all time. Started December 19, 1950. Miami won by 19 at Coral Gables. They won four of the last six, including the 80-74 decision three weeks ago. Trail seven now with almost seven gone second half. Two road teams already winning in earlier conference action today. Vasilievich over two guys. Hello. Yeah. I see you over there, Capel. There are times when you simply have to shake the offensive player's hand and say, congratulations. <laughs> that was well defended, pushed them beyond the three-point line. Vasiljevic is a guy known as a shooter. Got himself into a nice flow here in the second half, but the Seminoles making their bone on winning the glass. Terrence Mann getting the home team another offensive possession. Vasiljevic is hitting two legitimate threes. MJ Walker an answer. Wow. 13 for the rookie from Jonesboro, Georgia. It just seems to always happen that way. You give up the offensive rebound, and a three-point make is going to soon fight. This is one of those games by the end. We might be figuring out the two-point shooting percentage. Eight minutes in, Brown going to work on Walker. Florida State's gone zone now, and it's been pretty good to him. They've gone to a zone, but they have a player spying that ACC area. There's Vasilievich, another one. DJ Vasilievich, who had six in the win at NC State and was scoreless against Louisville, has nine and a half, 14 in the game, and four triples. His jersey should read caution flammable because that young man is hot. If you're going to play a zone, you have to find where he is, shade that side, stay down on his shot fakes, and be there on time to run him off that three-point line. Man, here is Kamaji, right-hand hook. Rebound Forrest. And a shot clock reset for Florida State. Man, lob. Big fella has eight. The evolution of Terrence Mann's game. A guy that we understand is an attacker, can get downhill. But his ability now to facilitate, be a ball handler, and make plays for others is remarkable. Ronnie Walker missed the runner. And the foul will be on Florida State. And it's on Kamaji, and it's his fourth. Terrence Mann taking the ball screen, gets downhill, throws it up high. Chris Kamaji goes up to throw it down. In ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Also streaming live right now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Six-point lead for Florida State. 10.55 to go at the Tucker Center in Tallahassee. And Dewan Yule, pretty quiet today, Jason, from the offensive perspective. 
Well, yeah, it's only three shot attempts, one make. And I think a big reason, the changing defenses of Florida State packing it in for much of this ball game in that zone, you also have to give a lot of credit to Chris Camacho. We talked about the first contest, you 20 big points. It was Kamaji's first game back after missing the previous 11. Now he's back in shape. He's a presence, and he is a guy deterring any attacks of the basket. But a lot of basketball still to be played. Juan Q has to come in this ball game and have a solid presence on the interior for the Kings. Turned over. Forrest leaves it for Kofor and Brown the foul. Two shots coming for Phil Kofor on Bruce Brown's second. Well, a tough play, turning the basketball over out of a timeout. And Forrest looks over his shoulder, recognized the big fellas running. They had two guys ahead. I would love to have gotten points out of that. But Bruce Brown taking a hard foul. Kofor slow to get up. The officials are going to go to the monitors and take a look. A hard foul, West, but he was going for the basketball. You're Florida State. You can't go for the home run play right there. You must find someone on the wing, get a sure two points. You have Angola, you have Walker running. You don't want to throw the ball to the backfield and then attack. But Brown swipes down, makes plenty of contact. They're waiting for word from the officials. It's hard to say there's anything flagrant there. Right. He went for the basketball. It's a hard foul against a big man. Play on. By the way, we said Kamaji, the foul going to the break. It was actually on Terrence Mann. So not the fourth on Kamaji. And we'll have free throws out of this. Yeah. So it's nothing more than what we said. Tim Fockerty and Bruce Brown, the foul. Sixteen foul on Miami, where Phil Cover has been very big today. But once again, it's not the guy you think about in the first two or three names in the scouting report, Jason. Absolutely. But when you're trying to win games, especially tough rivalry games, you need the others to step up. And Phil Cover has been a guy that Seminoles have been able to count on throughout this season. He shot the ball from the perimeter. In this game, he's attacked inside and off the bounce, doing an excellent job on both sides of the ball. Six points all at the line in the second half. The lead is seven. Kofor is out. So Angola, Mann, Kamaji, Forrest, and MJ Walker. Here's the lineup out there now for Coach Hamilton. Here is Bruce Brown on the drive and a foul out on the perimeter against Trent Forrest. Second on Forrest. Four on Florida State. And Brown will go to the baseline to put it in play. The Seminoles have to be aware in this zone. Vasilovich is in the corner. Assistant coach Charleston Young up screaming, <laughs> trying to let everyone know the guy that's been punishing us from distance. We have to have a great awareness of where he is on the floor. There is Vasilovich with Brown, eight to shoot. Miami can't wait around now. Brown, Wardenberg up strong and scores. Just the eighth field goal of the year for Sam Wardenberg. Great find from Bruce Brown. He's in a new role right now with this lineup. He is the point guard. His mindset has to change, become a facilitator. Nice find. Forrest to three. Trent Forrest's second three-pointer of the year. And it was created by Brian Angola. He got the position to attack the paint. Anytime you give up middle penetration, your defense is vulnerable. Brown tried to dunk it and hit the front rim. Huell recovers and scores. Six for Dewan Hewell. Excuse me, Wes. You can see the mindset of Bruce Brown now with the ball in his hands has switched. He's playing aggressive. He's being decisive in his decision making, whether attacking for others or for himself. But this is surgical on the offensive end for Florida State. Getting anything they want at all times 
rotating the basketball, and when all else fails, throw it to 12 feet and let number 21 go up high and get it. Terrence Mann puts that stuff on the money now. Well, Wes, he's throwing to a 7-4 guy. It's hard not to put it on the money. He's throwing it from 25 feet. The rim is 10 feet. Yeah, I get you. You got 7-4. <laughs> when he extends, he's right in the rim. Wardenburg, arcing, and oh! hitting! And Leonard Hamilton simply turns his back to the play. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than to be good. And Wardenburg knocks down that big time, timely three-point shot. Miami to within five. Brown on the drive off the front rim. They scramble for the loose ball. Vasilievich hits the deck. Tried to call timeout. Florida State had it. Now Kamaji has it. Timeout awarded to Florida State. And the hustle played by the biggest guy in the building. You can hear the appreciation of these fans. Those are winning plays from both teams. Giving up your body for the team. Loose ball, get a rebound. Bruce Brown fights for it. And now you're going to see the scuffle for the ball. You can't call a timeout unless you have possession. Kabaji recovers, signals timeout, but a possession to go. The three-point shot, Wartenberg against a short shot clock, sends up a prayer, and it was answered. These are his first points since November 25th against North Florida when he had nine against Matt Driscoll's team out of the A-Sun. Sam Wartenberg has picked up his minutes. He didn't play for six ball games when ACC competition started. Jason, he played a minute last Sunday at NC State. He played 13 minutes against Louisville. Today he's come in here and off the bench has given him nine minutes and picked up five points, including his third three of the year. And he's making big plays. We saw him slice to the basket, a great line for Bruce Brown. He went up and finished, and that three-point shot was right on time. Wes, when you're trying to get wins on the road, you need all hands on deck, and you need guys to step up and make plays. Wartenberg is right for the challenge here this afternoon. Van Forrest, MJ Walker, Brian Angola, Chris Kamaji for Florida State. Five-point lead approaching eight minutes. Man, a little fall away. Grab that. Vasilievich the rebound. Wardenberg, Lonnie Walker, Brown, and Abuka Asundu out there. Here's Lonnie Walker, bounces to Wardenberg, right back to Lonnie Walker. Hanging jumper good. A little layup, if you will, 16 for Lonnie Walker. Man, quickly to the basket. Fouled and Terrence Mann took a big fall. And the foul will be on Wardford. Florida State a three point lead. We continue after a word from your local ACC station. Bill and Bill. A quick check of the AP Top 25 brought to you by the Honda Dealers. Of the Carolinas, of course, number two, Virginia, a big win today at number four, Duke. Number 10, Carolina lost, and 18th ranked Clemson in Atlanta tomorrow night to meet Georgia Tech. And a look at Florida State's ledger today. Five and double figures, but not the leading scorer, Jason. But Terrence Mann has turned himself into a facilitator in this contest, recognizing other guys have the hot hand, and he's playing his part. But a balanced attack for the Seminoles, doing an excellent job sharing the basketball. But in the last 7.39 now, they must do the job defensively to stave off this late charge from the Miami Hurricanes. Terrence Mann, first of the two rattles out, now one of three at the line. He's a 74% free throw shooter. His mom, of course, is the head women's coach at Rhode Island, Dania. He wears 14 because that was her number. Four-point game. So Lynn Cape, this one might be pretty good for the wire, huh? Buck it up. Yep. Brown working against Forrest. Crossover into traffic. Vasilevich. 
right back to Brown. Attacks the big fella, Kamaji. And a whistle called. And the foul on Kamaji. Late whistle and tough call. You have one official on the baseline signaling verticality. With Kamaji pulling his hands back, going straight up and down. The official across the court whistles that contact was made. And it all evens out. Bruce Brown earns himself a trip to the foul line where he knocks down the first. Kofor back in the ball game. Brown knocks the first one down, his first free throw of the afternoon. Lead trimmed down to three. Second. Got it. Five for Bruce Brown. Kamaji with four now on Coach Hamilton's bench. Two-point game. Well, big minutes for Wardenburg, Jason. Absolutely. You look at this ball game, and the run that Miami has made has been with three reserves on the floor. Forrest lost it, tried to save it, and hit the knee of Brown. Six to shoot, it stays with Florida State. The interesting thing about Wardenburg is, last Sunday he had yet to play in his first ACC game. It's about preparing yourself each time out. When the opportunity arises, you're ready to roll. This young man, obviously, has put in the time in practice, yep. done the job mentally to prepare himself, and he's reaping the reward here this afternoon. Inbounds for Kofor, five. Four on the shot clock, a long three! Wow, Bill Kofor, out of my way, I'll handle this. Top of the key, bang, knocks it down. The old guy in the lineup, huh? away and turned over and here's Angola for Forrest. Man, Angola is by Wardenburg and tees up at Jay Walker. Miami looking for a run. Vasilievic another triple and it drops in for DJ Vasilievic. That's what we call the shooter's touch. A guy that can flat out shoot the basketball. The ball does a little dance on the rim and finds his way through the nets. A big time fast break. Three pointer pulling up. He's got 17. Go for the catch at the block. Fall away over Wartburg and a foul is called inside. And it is on Abuka Azundu, I believe. Third and seven now on the Canes with 550 to play. On the break, Bruce Brown recognizes to his left. Vasilovich is wide open. The ball hits the rim. You see the bench just bracing themselves, trying to wish it through the hoop. It finds its way through the bottom of the net. Pulling the Canes within two. Well, here's Mann, who hit one of two a moment ago, is two for four today. One in the one and one. Don't forget tonight, Wake Forest is at the KFC Yum Center to meet the Ville. 8 o'clock on the ACC Network. Check your local listings. David Padgett's team at 15-5. and five. Danny Manning's team looking for their second league win. 5.38 to play here. It's a three-point lead for Florida State. Wes, we think back to the last time these two teams met. Florida State missed nine free throws. You have to step up and make shots at the foul line when you have an opportunity. Brown shoots to tie and go to the rebound. Lead from man. He'll challenge Wardenburg and one. Big time players make big time plays. You get a long rebound, you put to the head, understanding that Terrence Mann is going to attack. When he gets that shoulder inside you, too strong, too athletic, eyes locked on the rim, a singular focus to finish the play. Big time finish from the junior. And pushes it back to five and a chance to double the margin. Only 
only five points at the half. Nine now in the ball game. Make it ten as he hits the free throw. This goes to show you your line doesn't have to start with a big scoring number to be effective. Absolutely. You can contribute in so many ways. Man has facilitated. He scored when he's needed. Rebounded the basketball. Now he's needed to step up and make plays in the defensive end. Lawrence approaching five minutes to play. And I think the foul on Kofer. It is his second. Six now on Florida State. Your Florida State holding on to a six-point lead. You want to defend without foul. You've done your job. You push DeWan Kuhl three steps off the block. If he catches it there, you play him face up, move your feet, put your chest on his shoulder, and defend without fouling. But you can't foul after you've already done your work. Brown on the drive, skips for Lonnie Walker. No, no, no. Rattles in the three. 19 now for the freshman. Walker. Three-point game again. Kofer, a little crossover in the basket. 19 for Kofer. I didn't know we were in Germany right now, but Phil Kofer with the fancy footwork, the Euro step, <laughs> to get to the cup. Five-point game again. 4.25 to go. Brown all the way to the basket. Rebound, man. Brown defends Walker. CJ trying to fight through traffic. Boy, Miami really aggressive out in space defensively in the half court game. Angola skips it in the left corner. Ten to shoot for man. Under four. Four on the shot clock. Angola on the drive. Lost it. CJ Walker shot clock violation. That'll bring us to a break. 3.49 to go at the Tucker Center. Knowles lead the Canes by five. Bill Kofer, oldest guy in the game, put numbers up today. What time is it? Saturday. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. And by your local Chevy dealer. Well, back with Jason Capel, Wes Durham, Jay Hoover, our producer, Philly McCoy, our director. Great men and women helping us bring you ACC basketball, and we walked ourselves into a pretty good ball game today, Mr. Capel. Absolutely. Coming down to the final 349, Seminoles holding on to a five-point lead, but the Hurricanes of late have found themselves an offensive flow. Bruce Brown taking over point guard responsibilities. Doing a nice job getting everyone involved. MJ Walker defends Brown, Florida State. Back to the man here. At least momentarily, let's see if they stay in it. Vasiliovic has been hot and stays that way. And that's a total defensive breakdown by MJ Walker. You have one assignment. Have your eyes locked in on number one in black. You don't need to pitch in, cover the elbow, and help. You stay locked in on the guy with the hot hand who's been drilling you from three, number six now in the afternoon. Tied his career high with 20. Has Vasiljevic. Two-point game. We approach three minutes to play. Angola with six to shoot. Baseline all the way through. Walker, a shot fake, and a left-handed three. Spun out, and here's Lonnie Walker. Miami can tie Vasiljevic for the lead, and it bounced out. Now C.J. Walker, one on three, and a foul. Big time guts by C.J. Walker. You talk about a swing here. Lonnie Walker attacking, makes the right basketball play to a guy that's knocked down six triples. And then the point guard, C.J. Walker, makes his mind up at half court. He's going to attack to the left. I think he's very fortunate he was bailed out with the foul there because the numbers were stacked against him. Set to the line, back down to first. Two out of five at the line today is C.J. Walker. Or two for four, I should say. 11 points in the ball game. 
second one down. My heavens. Miami has a school record 16 threes in the ball game today. Been that kind of day in this league, haven't oh, it? Absolutely. Just another Saturday in the ACC. Brown with nine to shoot on the drive. Bruce Brown, second field goal. Has been so much better over the last 11 minutes. He's the point guard, he's the decision maker, and he's doing a nice job finding others and picking his spots to attack on his own. Two point game approaching two minutes. Here's Kofer, right hand jump hook. Bounces in for Phil Kofer. And that's a scouting report play. If you're DeJuan Hugh, you must take away that left shoulder, force him back to the baseline, and take a tough shot. 21 for Kofer, who had 28 at Duke to open the ACC season. Heads up. Walker with the left hand and foul. The foul is on C.J. Walker, the sophomore from Indianapolis of Florida State, against Lonnie Walker, the freshman Redding PA for Miami. Great execution with the back door. And Lonnie Skywalker almost had a highlight reel play there. Switches to the left hand, lands awkwardly. But you just look at the way this young man is put together. He's built like a truck. It's going to be hard to hurt him. Walker two. fall, steps up, knocks down the first. One of two at the line, now making two of three. Nine and a half. 20 in the ball game. 21. 41 between Walker and Vasilievich of the Canes, 81 in a two point game with 143 to play. This is the point of the game where you want to see Florida State execute. They've had leads late where they haven't done a nice job on the offensive end having quality possessions. It's crunch time. You must take care of the ball and ensure you get a good look each time down. CJ Walker. 10 to shoot, all the way through, slips it to Mann, seven to shoot, here's Angola, back for Mann's three. Too strong, Bruce Brown the rebound, 73 seconds left to go. Two point game. Brown, lob, Huell the dunk, ties the game. Eight for DeWan, who will we go under a minute to go? And a timeout to be taken by Florida State with 52.1 to go. Well, we've already had the fifth overtime game in ACC play earlier this afternoon in Chapel Hill. We had a two-point game at Cameron between Virginia and Duke, and we're tied with 52.1 to go here in Tallahassee, Jason. A great Saturday in the ACC, and road teams unafraid to take their talents to the opposing team arena, ready for a fight. The Hurricanes knock back on their heels, and they've done the job here in this second half over the last nine minutes of plugging away on the back of Bruce Brown at the point guard position. Attacking downhill, finding others, picking his spot for himself. And right now, if you're Florida State in that huddle, you have to execute down the stretch on the offensive end. It can't be a bailout play. You have to execute, follow the game plan, and have a quality look on this end of the floor right now. What have you seen in the second half you think Leonard Hamilton will go to here? We've seen a lot of east-west stuff, though, in the last two or three possessions. And that's been the issue. That's not Florida State basketball. Florida State wants to attack downhill, get their footprints in the paint, put the defense in rotation, and now you can spray it out to open shooters. Brian Angola has to be a guy that gets a look or a guy that can make a decision for someone else in this possession. Brian Angola, Phil Kofer. C.J. Walker's taking the shot, but is that the guy you want with it? I don't think so. Right. Angola has to have the basketball to make the play or Terrence Mann being the guy as a decision maker on the floor. Trent Forrest is just one of eight from three coming in. His only basket today is a triple here in the second half. And it doesn't necessarily, by the way, have to be a three here. A good shot. A well-executed offensive possession where make or miss, now you can get back on defense and lock in. Kofer, man down. Angola defended by Walker here on the near side. 
And now Mann with 11 to shoot. Over the top of Huell, short. Brown the rebound. About seven second, eight second differential. Shot clock to game clock. Jim Laranega has two timeouts if he chooses to use them. Lawrence Vasiljevic. Lonnie Walker had the one that sent it to overtime the other night against Louisville. He's got it with 10. Seven to shoot for Walker. Huell sets the screen. Walker works through. Hanging jumper to tie. No good. Rebound and punched away by Lawrence. It'll go to Florida State with 5-5 left. Leonard Hamilton has a timeout, and he'll use it here. So Lonnie Walker, who sent the Louisville game to overtime, was going for the game winner here today. And I'm totally fine with that shot. He took a good shot, a clean look, and gave his team an opportunity to get an offensive rebound. The one Huell came barreling down that lane and very closely came away with that offensive rebound. Right now, if you're Florida State, side out of bounds. Last possession you see, taking the ball screen to in and out. And that's a good look for that young man who shot a hot basketball throughout this contest. Yep. You're Miami right now. You must execute the ball screen assignments however you're going to defend it. When a shot goes up, five guys must box out. The second shot is what beats you many times in these situations. Well, 18 games in ACC play, including the two early ones today, have been five less or overtime. We're looking at 19 here. Now, Jim Laranega has two timeouts. Once Florida State takes the floor, he might want one here. He just took another one right now. Yep. So no timeouts for Florida State. So Bill Covington Jr. telling us they have looked to double check that the time is right, correct, Jason? Absolutely. Yep. Wanted to make sure on that deflection that no time, no extra time ran off that clock. Ding Adele against Brian Crawford tonight at 8 on the ACC Network. Louisville and Wake Forest at the KFC Young Center. You'll enjoy that one. MJ Walker to put it in play. 5-5 five, five left. C.J. Walker with five, four. Angola with two, one. Blocked by Lonnie Walker in overtime in Tallahassee. Lonnie Walker, every bit met the challenge of Brian Angola in the screens there, Jason. Well, he went for the jugular on the offensive end, trying to put the game away with the jump shot. But here makes the biggest play of the afternoon on the defensive end, understanding the Seminoles are going to Angola. Walker did not allow himself to get screened on that baseline. Chase them, contested. We have five more minutes to decide a winner. CC play so far this year. It'll be the second of the day. NC State, one of the road teams that won, joining Virginia. Beat Carolina 95-91 today at Smith Center in Chapel Hill. So we get to the end of regulation with Miami hitting 16 of 30 from three-point territory. That's a great recipe to compete on the road. Talked about NC State, their big win against the Tar Heels, where they knocked down 15 in regulation. The Canes 16, and now we have another five minutes. Florida State, you must do the job on the offensive end execution. Defensively, contest the three-point shot. You can't have mental lapses now at this point in the game. You have to dot the I's, cross the T's, and do all the little things on both sides, both ball clubs, to help yourself step into the winner's circle. Under five to go in the overtime on the tip. Vasilievich, Lawrence, Huell, Walker, and Brown are there for Miami. 12 to shoot. Brown resets. Vasilievich has been hot. And it rattled out. Rebound to Kofer. Lawrence trying for the hell ball. And possession will belong to Florida State. Alternate possession. And CJ 
Walker, I think, got a floor burn as a result of all the stuff going on under there. Lawrence got slung around. Bill Cofer, tough dude, Jason. Very tough. His dad, a former defensive yep. line player at Tennessee, played in the NFL with the Detroit Lions, and Phil's got a little bit of a football mentality. 83 all. Here's Angola. Lob. Oh, he caught it and stuffed it home. Kamaji now opens overtime with his sixth field goal. And Wes, Angola is the guy that made the play. He has to touch the basketball, not just to shoot and score for himself, but he puts so much pressure on the defense, and he can find other guys for easy opportunities. Two-pointer to tie from Huell, no good. Last touch by Mann. You need a guy to step up and make a play for you. What Brian Angola has shown, he can do that, whether scoring or facilitating. Once again, off the ball screen, lobbing it to the rim. No help side, Kamaji puts it down, and the Seminoles defensively. Hey, Walker, unbelievable move. <laughs> Walker's got 14. Three ball from Lonnie Walker, no good. Angola, C.J. Walker feeling it. Kofer will reset with Angola. Oh, the state leads by four. Coach Hamilton about to jump out of his shoes <laughs> on that attempt. And one for man. And that's what you need to do to execute down the stretch. You can't let the moment get too big for you and take ill advised shots. Get the ball downhill, attack the paint, except you're going to get hit. Focus on the finish. A tough two for Terrence Mann. A possession before, great defense, the deflection, the tip of him, and C.J. Walker up and under the jelly roll off the glass. In my experience. The whole time in Tallahassee with Florida State in Miami. Jason, this has been something here today. Florida State sharing is caring. Six players in double figures, very unselfish. And making plays down the stretch here in the overtime period, multiple guys. Miami being led by Lonnie Walker, once again doing Lonnie Walker things. Knocking down shots from the perimeter, DJ Masinovic making shots as well. And this is a big possession right here for Miami. It and one from Terrence Mann makes it a seven-point game. About two minutes gone in the extra session. Brown. Lawrence tees one up. Reigns it in. 19 for Anthony Lawrence. 90 to 86. That's a huge basket for Miami. A set play out of the timeout. Executed perfectly. And Walker knocks down a big time three-point shot. Terrence Mann playing a little bully ball inside. Wes, he's going to attack with his right hand more times than not. If you cut him off, does a nice job spinning away from the defense. He must step to the line with confidence right now and put these free attempts away. Third on Lonnie Walker. Double bonus. Although two coming for Mann as a result of being in the active shooting. Five-point game. Second one. No good. Five-point contest, 91-86. Approaching two and a half to go. Brown over the screen by Huell. And Angola the rebound. They bring it front court. All the way! Brian Angola. Show me what you got, coast to coast. I haven't seen the roof being raised in quite some time. But it's going on in Tallahassee right now. Timeout Miami. And Brian Angola, who's having quite a senior campaign in the ACC, just delivered a highlight in this one. Angola takes the rebound. 
Speed kills and power hurts. And that's a double dose of both there. Coast to coast, up high for an emphatic jam. Get the Seminoles a seven point lead now late in this contest in overtime. Miami defense, which has been stout throughout the season, giving up 93 points here today on the road. It's amazing what kind of day this has turned into in the ACC as we reach the halfway point. Just the second time in 148 dates that Carolina and Duke have both played at home, they both lost. Brian Morris of the ACC office, since February 21st, 1973 it's been, since Carolina and Duke both lost home games on the same date. And here you've got two overtime games in your first three conference games, and you still got Syracuse and Pittsburgh, last report a tight game, and Virginia Tech at Notre Dame, and Wake at Louisville still to come tonight. And Clemson and Georgia Tech tend to play them tight tomorrow. <laughs> a lot of great basketball still to be played. Woo. And a great one here with two minutes to go. Seven point game, four to shoot. Lonnie Walker again over Kamaji. 23 for Lonnie Walker. Angola. Now here's Terrence Mann. He will try to help. Kamaji. One dribble. Back for CJ Walker. Off the Kamaji screen. Split it. And score. Heady play by C.J. Walker. Well, the adage is the low man wins. And C.J. Walker on that split got low to the ground and exploded to the hoop for an easy two. 75 seconds to play in a seven-point game. Bruce Brown all the way and scored against Kamaji. Nine for Brown. Five-point game, a minute to go in overtime. Larinaga signaling for his team to foul. And he got it. But you Hewlett. must be careful fouling away from the basketball. You can't simply grab someone. Here you see C.J. Walker. The ball screen is set. Huel late to jump out. The point guard drops that inside shoulder, pushes the ball through. Low man wins the explosion for an uncontested two. 55.8 left, Chris Kamaji from the African nation of Chad is 7 of 14 at the line this year. This is not his area of expertise. Leonard Hamilton upset there on the sidelines, asking why wasn't that an intentional foul? You will grab Kamaji away from the basketball, which is something you're not allowed to do, simply go grab a player. Kamaji misses the first, an opportunity here for another. You see Leonard Hamilton in Florida State's great success at home. And there's Kamaji getting one of the two. 13 for the big fella. Here comes Forrest, and Kamaji will check out. The expression doesn't change much on the Gastonia, North Carolina native Leonard Hamilton. Court, down six. Not sure Miami can wait much here, Jason. Got to go. Get a good look at the basket. Doesn't have to be a three. But Tom is not on your side. You must attack early. Huell went for the dunk. Man was there to contest it. Walker in traffic. And C.J. Walker ends up toward the photographers on the baseline at the south end. Two shots coming. And that Swiss Army knife steps up once again. Fuel looks to have an easy two. But Terrence Mann does a bit of everything for this ball club. Comes from the help side. Does not allow an easy finish. Goes up high to contest that shot. Leonard Hamilton and the entire Florida State staff begging C.J. Walker to slow down when the Seminoles get the basketball. You scored enough points, you want to run some clock out. And as a point guard in crunch time, you must step up and make free throws to put games away. It's a two possession game now with 35.2. Walker in an ideal setup for Florida State needs to hit one of these. Absolutely. And he gets the second.
Brown. Front court against Walker. High screen, Huell. Brown on the drive, swatted out by Kofer. Well, backcourt foul on Lonnie Walker. Phil Kofer's been outstanding. 21 points and eight rebounds. That's the offensive side, but that defensive stop right there makes him our Chevy performance of the game, brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Flex on the big fella. Doing the job on both ends, and when your team needs it, you step up and make a big-time defensive play. And this is as excited as I've seen the Seminoles as a team get. And you love the fact that it follows a defensive play. This is a team that's been well-connected in this contest, withstood runs, and had the toughness to step up now in overtime and take control of this game. And Gola hits them both. He is now six for six at the line. He has four in the overtime and 14 in the game. And Phil Kofer, veteran guy who's been battling injuries most of his career, but he has stood strong as a senior, Jason. Well, he's had himself a buffet today. Getting a little bit of everything inside, outside, attacking off the bounce, using his full package in a variety of ways. There's a little nifty footwork, the Euro step, faces you up, up and over. If he gets to that left shoulder, there's not much you can do inside. Very decisive, a great, calm, poised demeanor. And he has led, as a senior, to what could be a big win with 21 seconds to go on the Seminoles home floor. Well, a nine-point lead for Florida State. Miami out of the timeout here. So 21.4 left. Miami brings back Lawrence, Brown, Walker, Huell. And Vasilievich. And down three possessions. Jim Laranega's team will have to get after it pretty quick here. And Bill Covington Jr. looking for a little housekeeping out from underneath the basket. like they're taking care of the moisture on the inline. Brown, the only player in the backcourt for Miami. He'll race it all the way down, lay it up and in. Bruce Brown, the quick basket. 99-92, now the foul will have to come pretty prompt, I would imagine. Oh, Angola slipped away, and there's Vasilievich drawing his second. And Angola will try to make it 100 points at the line. Leonard Hamilton, 78 and 44 at home against the ACC in his 16 seasons in Tallahassee. And that's 100, and you see the Knowles have hit the century mark for the third time this year. They did it against Syracuse with 101, and the Citadel with 113. Another one for Angola. Eight of eight at the line. Ten seconds left. And Miami will score on the Brown layup. Five seconds left, a seven-point game. And here is Trent Forrest. And a backcourt foul on a reach by Lonnie Walker will be his fifth. He's going to finish with 23. Coming off of 25 against Louisville. And you better get ready because the young man from Reading, PA, is on the march now, Jason. Well, he's locked in, playing great basketball. When you take your game on the road and you produce, you have shown and proved to be a guy that can step up on any stage. Yep. Just not enough today against the balanced attack of Florida State. Six guys in double figures, great job sharing the basketball, and an excellent inside-outside attack from the Seminoles this afternoon. We had no way of knowing it would go to the 
extra session at 83. But I'm not sure we thought it was going to be that high scoring either. Well, but it really turned into a three-point machine today at times. Well, Miami's an excellent defensive team. Florida State prides itself on defense as well. But a well-played game on both sides. Split the series this season, but a hard-fought overtime win on the home floor by the Florida State Seminoles. Five and four is Florida State in the league. 16 and five overall. Miami falls to 15 and five. They're now four and four in the ACC. The Canes are headed back home to Coral Gables to meet Pittsburgh. Florida State is in Winston-Salem on Wednesday night to meet Wake Forest. Stay tuned. More to come from the Tucker Center in Tallahassee. Nine-point win for the home team on the ACC Network. Only one turnover in the second half. They yeah. took care of the basketball, withstood the runs of Miami, and then the big-time players made plays down the stretch. You look at Terrence Mann getting to the hoop. Uh, Ryan Angola doing the job yeah. attacking, facilitating inside. Just a total team effort, great toughness, and a connected team getting a big win on their home floor in about Florida ten, State. About 10 days ago, you saw Florida State lose almost this exact same kind of against ball Louisville. game against Louisville. Absolutely. What did you learn about them today after watching them survive in advance against their rival Miami? Well, I saw them execute in overtime. I didn't think they executed in this game in the last two minutes of the contest. That's what allowed Miami to crawl back in the game and force overtime. But down the stretch, making the necessary plays with key guys being at the forefront, Terrence Mann, Brian Gola, those are the guys that have to be the ones to make shots or the facilitators, but they have to have the basketball. And defensively, stepping up, contesting, finished possessions with rebounds, a total team and tough effort here at home. Hard to believe we're just to the midway point of the Absolutely. ACC. Great play, great Saturday. Unbelievable, no question about it. Carolina lost at home in overtime to NC State. Duke lost at home to Virginia. First time that's happened since February of 1973. You see a ball game go to the wire and in overtime. Here Florida State beats Miami. Syracuse and Pittsburgh were playing pretty close and you still got two tonight with Virginia Tech at South Bend and Wake Forest at Louisville. But it is a win today for the Seminoles and one they needed too, Jason. You must protect your home floor if you want to keep traction within the ACC. What I loved about it, toughness, togetherness. A team that was connected, shared the basketball, six players in double figures. And when the going got tough, they stepped up to the plate and threw the punts to win this basketball game. A great job and a big win in a rivalry setting to get the split this season. And Florida State survives Miami hitting a school record 17 threes to beat the Canes in overtime, 103 to 94. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Our next telecast on most of these network stations tonight at 8 Eastern, Wake Forest in Louisville from the KFC Young Center. For Jason Cable, our producer Jay Hoover, our director Billy McCoy, and our great crew, Wes Durham reminding you, you've been watching coverage of ACC basketball on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Good night.